Hello guys, sorry for being so late on getting another video out. I have been sick and this flu that's going around in the south, man, it lasts for like four or five days. So as you can hear, I'm still a little bit sick, but I'm going to try and get to this video without coughing too much. Alright, so I am talking about universal basic income, UBI, and why I think it's wrong. Or why we should work. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go with two common sense reasons and then the biblical ideas behind work. Alright, so common sense reason number one. We already have examples through the welfare system that people don't flourish whenever we do this, where we just give them money to live on and they have everything they need. They die, basically. <clears throat> Most people on welfare don't become great artists. They don't become great engineers or thinkers. They don't aspire to be more than they already are, and they don't encourage others to do to go beyond what they're given. How do we know this? All right, so because all the great creators and thinkers out there, there's a small percentage that come from the background of welfare. They didn't have to go to work, they didn't have to strive, and they didn't have to go through hardships in order to stay where they are now. So my example of this is Stephen Lemieux, and I think he's a good example because he grew up in an unstable and violent home, and that was part of the welfare state, if I understand his story correctly. He ran from that home like as fast as he could, <laughs> and he's now, and he worked, and he had to go through some hardships, and he had to go through some things to be where he is now with the money that he has now. He was able to learn and teach himself and everything else through hard work and dedication. All right, if you have everything you need, there's no reason to really work all that hard or to do any of those things. So something to think about. This, when I look at this, we give money to people simply for existing. Like you're just here, here you go, here's some money. We kill their creativity and drive to create great things. And how do we know about that encouragement that I was talking about earlier? <clears throat> because we have generations of people living on welfare. People go on welfare, they have children, and then teach their children how to go on welfare, and then teach their children how to go on welfare. And in order to have welfare, you have to have like a kid and all this other stuff for it to be something you can live off of. So, why do that, you know, so there, there's these generations living on welfare, and these same generations is considered stupid to work and make your own way in the world. Why do that when the government will give you what you need? No need for that independent streak, just rely on what's given to you. And for me, that's a very, that's a very dangerous message. We should never just rely on what's given to us. We should go out there and, you know, work a bit. So my second one is work creates relationship and broadens the mind. All right. How many times have you made a friend, a boyfriend, or a husband, or a girlfriend, etc., of someone you used to work with? How many times or how many times have you heard that story? I know a good many more people now and all different types of people than I ever would had I not worked. All right, work can take you around the world, whether it's through the right field or through the money you make through the field you're in. Work teaches you how to cooperate with a group towards a shared goal, which is not something that comes naturally to most of us. Working different places has brought in my mind in many ways. Uh, one way is I used to work for an HVAC company and now I understand you know, air conditioning, which is important here in the South. Uh, working at fast food teaches you how to clean properly, how to prepare food safely, how to have some good hygiene, you know, and a lot of people who come in there don't already know this stuff. I don't know how many times I've had to teach somebody how to sweep a floor, how to mop a floor, how to wash dishes. Okay, so not everyone is being taught these things. How to wash your hands correctly um, and how to handle food safely so that people don't get sick. So just working a basic fast food job can teach you a lot about hygiene, cleanliness, your food, and these are all basic things that people need to know anyway. 
But if you didn't work, you didn't go there, and people weren't teaching you that, how would you have learned that? Do you see? If somebody wasn't coming by to your house to teach you these things, you would stay in that same mindset, in that same, basically unclean, because you don't know how to do it. <clears throat> so there's a lot of people like that where I live, where they come... They come and they get a job and mom and dad have done it all for them and they don't know how to take care of themselves. They don't know how to make their own food, like how to make a sandwich. They've never had to do it. Mom and dad have done it for them. So <clears throat> that is a form of welfare as well where mommy and daddy do it for you all the time. And then you don't know and you don't even think about how these things happen. There's a lot of independence built in whenever you have to work you start to wonder where things come from and you start to become a thinker instead of someone who just stands around all day and doesn't think about things. Okay. So, if you even apply yourself to these basic things inside fast food, then you learn about advertising, how to manage things towards wealth building, how to take care of something, how to fix it, you know, fix it first and then if you can't fix it, then get rid of it. Those kinds of things that come through in this work. So you have to wonder if someone doesn't want you to work and they just want to give you money, are they wanting you to not be someone who thinks? Are they wanting you to not have your independence? Like, where is this coming from? Why do they want to do this? And that's sort of just my two, like, common sense reasons for not doing this. So I'm going to go into the Christian perspective now. From a Christian perspective, I can't be for this, definitely not at all either. The Bible is pretty clear in almost every book. It talks about how good work is. It assigns jobs, people, and all this other stuff. So work is something that never ends, it never stops. There's no such thing as retirement and all this because you're always either working to better your family, yourself, or you're always working in the field of putting out the gospel, okay? So you're always working. Um, you're never in a situation where you're retired and you're just able to sit around and do nothing. That's not a thing for God. Genesis 2.15 says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and care for it. So from the beginning, before there was women, before anything, a guy, God put Adam, into the garden and said, here, care for him. Name the animals, do all this stuff. He had a job. He had work. We're built for this. You start to take away the guidelines or the, the structure that God placed in us. Having children, working, being pair bonded by man and woman, caring for the elderly, caring for the orphan, all these things, you start to take that away and people, if you notice, begin to lose their humanity. They begin to lose this thing where you're another human being and I'm going to take care of you and make sure you're okay because you're another human being. And there's a reason these structures are put into place so that we don't harm each other, so that we develop into, you know, standard good people. <laughs> Otherwise, we won't. Without it, we will not. Now, I know people would argue that with me, but I've lived long enough to see it. We just won't do it. So, that for me right there is a very good example of why we should work. Because God made us to work. When you take work away, people, especially dudes, become, they get depressed, they become less of what they are, etc. So, working is good, alright? I'm going to continue on with the rest of my thing here. So from the beginning, we manage the creation that God places here. And when I read another verse, uh, it's a set of verses, Deuteronomy 24, 14 through 15, it talks about not holding someone's wages because it becomes sin to you. And the only way I can think that that would possibly happen would be <clears throat> if you start to become this greedy bastard number one. <laughs> right you become the guy who's like well I'll pay you I'll pay you tomorrow I'll pay you tomorrow I'll pay you tomorrow but doesn't want to give up his money and so you've lied you've led people on you're making slaves out of people 
which regardless of what anyone tells you is not okay according to the Bible <clears throat> so these things you become this greedy bastard number one who you know it that's against God as well greed is against God you pay someone what they're worth you pay someone what you told them that you would pay okay and in this way work develops you from the outside in and that's basically how it has to happen because usually we will not develop ourselves from the inside out that's just not what we do so the second thing in the Bible what I see the Bible in the Bible, work creates and bolsters relationships, right? 1 Corinthians 9, 8 through 10 talks again about paying guys who worked with you because they helped you and they expect to share in the rewards of the labor. And this in turn creates this working relationship, which in turn creates a community. People working together to feed themselves and their families. Proverbs 31 is a whole chapter dedicated to showing women how to work to support their husbands and households to help him do that, okay? They work for the betterment of the family unit that they've created, right? What is the one thing you hear from guys all the time? Like when I talk to dudes, okay? The one thing they want in a woman is a supporter, somebody else who's also working, who also shares his goals together, who also wants to do this with him. He wants to help her, help me. What's a man, what's a woman want in a man? A worker, somebody who works hard, comes home to her, you know, that kind of thing. When I was looking for a husband, he had to be older than me, he had to have, he had to have a job that he had stayed at. For longer than five years because I wanted stability and he had to have all of these things and about half of them had to do with his work ethic <clears throat> because I am willing to work I'm a very hard worker I've worked most of my life so I didn't want someone else who didn't do that right so when I met my husband he had two jobs so automatically there I'm, I'm good he had been in his he had been in his job for like 15 years or something so all of these things to me said, okay, this is a worker. This is a person who doesn't mind working. And so I knew, just judging by his work ethic, that when we go to make a goal together, we will be there to support each other in doing that. And that has been true, mostly. <clears throat> well, I want to do something crazy. He's like, well, hold on. <laughs> but other than that, it's been pretty true. So they're both there working to the betterment of the family unit that they create. And the, in the Bible, a family unit does not mean children. Family unit means husband and wife. That's a family unit. And they leave their parents and they go and they create their own household. And in that household, you, you should, according to the Bible, have two workers. So <clears throat> there we are. They're there to work together to make a better life for them. So work's a good thing, guys. Just in closing, I'd like to say, I hope you consider what's going on all around us when thinking about these things. There are people out there. There, there always have been forever, as, far, as long as we can tell from written history, that there are people who want others not to have the freedom that work and freedom of speech and the carrying of, of any type of weaponry, whether it be guns or knives or whatever, that provides people to, that provides a freedom to plot your own course, create your community, you better your relationships and better yourself. It may, you know, it might sound weird for me to say that, but it's true. If you just look at your history, there are people who always want to take your freedom away from you. So you have to you have to fight it, okay? What is the most awesome is having the ability to freely work and choose your own course in life. So think about that as you're going through and you're hearing things like this that, that, that sound awesome. They have this little kernel of, oh, I don't have to do anything. You know, what what does this thing that is being proposed really speak to? Does it speak to hard work, freedom? Does it speak to my laziness, my greediness, 
Because let me tell you, the numbers that I've seen on these, at least basic income things, have been like $1,600 a month. And I've heard all kinds of different ways they think that they could do it. But what it basically turns into is I get paid this money per month just because I'm here. And the only time somebody wants to give you something like that just because you're here is the trade-off is usually your freedom. The Bible, though, is all about your freedom. You being free to choose your own course, to plot your own life, to have your own dreams, and for you to work to make them with God. So just think about that, guys. Next time, I don't know really what I'm going to be talking about next time, but this has really gotten to me because I almost fell into it where it was like, oh, man, that sounds awesome. But I had to think about it. So until next time, guys, be blessed. Bye.